introduce yourself, uh, your name, and how, and how long you've been at UC? Uh, my name is uh, Richard Kretschmer, Jr., and I was hired in 1969, and I retired in 2010, and taught about four more years, and then officially retired in 2014. Uh, what subject did you teach? <clears throat> I was in the Department of Special Education. My area was hearing impairment, but I taught a course in language development for the entire 41 years, 45 years that I was here. And it was a required course in special education and in speech and hearing. And I had students from reading, from linguistics, from English, the foreign languages, and the course too. Uh, what made you get into uh, uh, special education? Well, I'm a CODA, a child of deaf parents, and my parents were deaf, and I was uh, raised in a deaf household. And when I decided to go to college, or uh, when I was allowed to go to college, um, I uh, decided that I would uh, go into deaf education, and I, that's what I did. How was it, you know, being raised by two parents that had hearing disabilities? Uh, probably just thus, like you. You were raised by two hearing parents. Uh, my first language was a a ASL. Uh, <clears throat> my family was the only deaf family in the community. And so I uh, learned to talk. I learned to sign and then I learned to talk. And I spent uh, all my time in a small town, a small farming community in Illinois and um, was in the, uh, to the chagrin of everyone, I was in the academic track. <laughs> and uh, the reason I say that is that I came from a very uh, socially stratified um, community. There were the very wealthy and the wealthy, and then there was the poor, and the two groups didn't mix, mix very much. And I was one of the poor kids that was in the academic track. Uh, well, what, do, what do you hope students took away from your class when you taught at UC? Well, what I wanted was two things. I wanted them to have a very, well, three things. It was a year-long course, and in the first quarter, my expectation was is that they would have a very strong understanding of how language and communication operated in, among adults. So it was very geared toward adult uh, communication. The second quarter was uh, language development, and my expectation is that they would come out with a very strong understanding of how children go about the process of learning language. And then the third quarter was on special needs children. And my, expe my expectation was that they would take the first two quarters and apply it to working with children with disabilities. Okay. Um, why did you want to teach at UC? Well, <clears throat> I was working in, uh, at Gallaudet College in uh, Washington, D.C., and I proposed to my wife, who was here in Cincinnati. So um, we had to make a decision, would she come to Washington or would I come to Cincinnati? And I made the decision that uh, she needed to be here more than I needed to be there. So I came to Cincinnati and uh, applied at UC. They didn't like, didn't want me, so they turned me down. So I wrote a grant, a five-year research grant, got it funded, and worked at the Cincinnati Speech and Hearing Center. And then all of a sudden, they became interested in me, and then they hired me the next year. <laughs> what do you think would happen if you took the job in D.C.? I probably would have stayed within the deaf communities. And, and it was actually probably a very good thing that I came here to UC 
because uh, UC provided me with the platform to broaden myself and to broaden my professional goals. Um, what was the hiring process when you came? I know you said it was a little difficult, but... Well, when I came here, um, there was a rule that, uh, the, uh, a nepotism rule, and my wife was in speech and hearing, and they wanted to hire me, but the university said no. My wife was already employed, and you couldn't have a husband and wife in the same department. And uh, so I came over here to uh, education, over to education, and I was interviewed by the uh, faculty, every member of the faculty, and I was uh, interviewed by um, the department head, and then I was interviewed by the dean, and the dean is the one that nixed me because he was in deaf ed, and he and I philosophically didn't have the same viewpoint about deafness. So he decided that I wasn't a good fit. But then he left the next year and they hired me. <laughs> uh, I, I know you mentioned you had, you had uh, problems with the uh, dean when you when you're about to be hired. Did you feel any uh, any problems with other faculty members? No, no, no. You say was the best thing that ever happened to me. Oh. Um, can, you, can you go f further, like, you know, did they meet any of your needs? <clears throat> I was hired with the, uh, when we were making the transition between uh, a city institution to a state institution. And part of that transition is that they wanted to increase their uh, research visibility. So they hired me specifically to beef up the research capabilities of special ed. And uh, so that's, so I was hired to do that. And uh, I became the director of, their, uh, of the doctoral program in special ed. And, uh, and I accomplished what they wanted me to accomplish. Uh, I, I managed to make it a uh, well-known doctoral program in the, in, the, in the nation and even internationally. Uh, did you write any books uh, while you're at UC? Yeah, I wrote two. Uh, one is uh, considered a classic in deaf education. Uh, and the other one I, it was co-authored by a woman, uh, Alice String, who at the time was uh, probably the most well-known person in language development for the deaf in the country. And she asked me to help write a book with her. So I wrote half the book and she wrote the other half. And the classic is written by me and my wife. Uh, and I'm very proud of that book. It was uh, quite a breakthrough. And it, it, it uh, people, people still remember it. <laughs> I guess it would be really special since you, know, yeah. you wrote it half right. with, your, with your wife. Um, did, it have, did students change over time? at your time at UC, or how, how did it change? Uh, well, first of all, I got older. <laughs> uh, when I was uh, first started, I was about, about the same age as the students. Uh, and as I got older, the students seemed to get younger and younger and younger. Uh, however, uh, I think I connected with all of the students pretty, pretty much. Uh, I think the major change is technology. That's when I saw the biggest change. Uh, students were connected to their phones and connected to their computers, even in class, uh, which didn't bother me. I mean, that's, that's okay. Uh, in terms of the quality of students, I don't think I saw any difference. I think the quality has always been consistently high. Um, has technology changed, like the way you, you know, taught uh, hearing impaired students? Uh, yes. Uh, the big thing right now, and uh, toward the end of my career, and I became very interested in it, was um, uh, cochlear implants. Okay. And uh, 
that has made a big change in the field. And it's also set up, hardened the divisions within the field because there's the pro-cochlear implants and then there's the anti-cochlear implant people. Um, I, in other areas of special ed, uh, there's, the technology has really made ma major changes in terms of uh, like voice, re uh, voice recognition, voice generation uh, devices. Uh, for the blind, uh, the in, uh, auditory encoding uh, systems. So there's been a lot of changes, uh, but the basic principles of special education are essentially the same. I mean, it's just the trappings have changed, but not the substance has, has changed. Well, as you see, did they leave the cochlear implant? Um, you know, were they for it or were they against it? Uh, the people that are against it are the die-hard signers who uh, uh, feel that cochlear implant is going to destroy the deaf community because it's, uh, it allows deaf, uh, deaf people to go into the hearing society and much more freely. The people that are for it are the people who are very anti-signers. Uh, and the irony of it is, is that a lot of the cochlear implant kids, when they become adults, learn sign. So that becomes both talkers and signers. Uh, but uh, so that's hardened the division. That's been the main division in deaf ed, and that's hardened the the divisions. Okay. And how has the faculty changed over time? Uh, I think when I first came here, the faculty was very much into service. Uh, and that's consistent with the fact that it was a city institution rather than a state institution. When we made the switch to state, I think the, the service component has become less and less um, important uh, and research has become more important. And I have mixed feelings about that. I, I, I believe in service, and I believe that every faculty member has an obligation to, uh, to connect to the community. But I also believe very much into research, so I think there needs to be a balance between the two. But I see the, the, the weight going more toward research and less and less toward service. And uh, who would you prefer? Would you prefer research or service? Oh, I'm. I'm both. Uh, and the reason I say that is uh, I ran a preschool program for 12 years uh, at a uh, nonprofit in institution while I was simultaneously uh, a faculty member. And so I, what I was able to do is to take my research and apply it directly to children. And I think that's the best of, best of both worlds is when you can find the service, but also where you have the opportunity to actually uh, apply uh, the science into, into that service. Okay. And um, what are you most proud of at your time at UC? I think the thing that I'm most proud of is that I, um, two things. Uh, one is uh, I had 68 doctoral students that I completed dissertations with. And I'm very proud of those 68 students and what they've done in the field. Uh, they've they've made, helped make major changes uh, in, in the field, and I'm very proud of that. The second thing I'm proud of is that I taught a, a, I taught a course for 44 years, and students still remember the course. I, I actually saw a student who was in my very first class and she was talking about how she remembered the class very fondly and, and how, and she actually remembered some of the content, which is also appeal, appealing to me. Uh, so those are the two things I think I'm most proud of. Is there any uh, students that graduated or got their doctorate, are they still working that field now? Oh yes, I have, uh, probably of the 68 that are there, I would probably say about 
maybe 55 are still in the field, and the others have either died or retired. Have they made any more significant improvements? Huh? Have they made any more like significant improvements? Or yes. Uh, one of my doctoral students became the head of uh, special education in the province of Ontario. I had uh, two or three students who uh, uh, had done some major uh, uh, funded research uh, <coughs> at uh, Gallaudet and at RIT, uh, Rochester Institute of the Deaf. Uh, a lot of my students have written books. I've got copies of the books that they've written. So. Yeah, I, I think they've made major contributions, and they're, even today they're making contributions. Like how so? Well, <clears throat> I just got a, a call from a lady who's uh, head of the program, uh, one of our programs down in uh, Florida, and she's uh, done some major kinds of um, work in the public schools in Florida, and she's doing research connected to that. and. Uh, uh, what she was telling me was I was very impressed with, and, I, and uh, so they're still there. They're <laughs> still there. <laughs> um, what changes did you witness at UC? What changes? Yeah. Well, I think the major change is going from the state institute. I mean, the the city institution to uh, the state institution. Uh, I think that was the right thing to do. But it changed the the mission of the of the university, and it, it was both a uh, easy transition and a difficult transition. Uh, the second thing I think that is is that is, uh, is different is that we've gone pretty heavily into research. Uh, and I know there's a lot of attempt to bring service and teaching focus back into the into the uh, mix, but having talked ha as I talk to the younger faculty, they seem to be less interested in teaching and less interested in service and more interested in in doing research and I think that's okay. I mean, if that's what people want to do, that's okay. It just happen, uh, it's, it happens not to be what I am all about, because I, I believe that the three were equal. Now, what were some of the easy transitions from, uh, from city to state? Well, I think the city never got over the fact that we made the transition. Even to, to today, I'm not sure they've reconciled the fact that we've made the transition. Uh, the second thing was the faculty, because the faculty, uh, most when I came on, most of them were hired when it was a city institution, and they were very, very geared toward service in the community. Uh, and all of a sudden, the rules began to change, and, and I think that they found it difficult. Uh, and as the rules changed, the new faculty that were hired were slightly different than them. And so there became sort of a division between the service people and the uh, non-service people. Um, and I think the students changed too. That, you know, you talked about change. I think that's when it began to, I saw the biggest change because the, the, the population became more widespread. Uh, before it was almost 90-90% Cincinnati. And then all of a sudden we started having students from international students and we started having uh, students from all over the country coming and that changed the complexion of the, of the student body. Did you like the uh, bigger uh, student size or student population? Yes. I, I actually helped contribute to it. <laughs> How so? Um, it was a, that was the period that I was out doing um, a lot of outreach in the uh, nationally, and as I was doing that outreach, uh, I would have students contact me that they had heard me and wanted to know more about the program, and so I would say that uh, during that period of time, I I don't think I had any students from Cincinnati. Oh. <laughs> 
Did you like it? Did yeah, yeah, I, I like the diversity. Uh, it was fun having someone from California and someone from Brooklyn in the same class and uh, because they had very different viewpoints of on life and how they saw life. Uh, and it was fun to see them congel into a group. Uh, and, and that was very exciting to see because uh, they would come as individuals and by the time they left they became this sort of cadre of people who, who still were in contact with one another when they left and that was very, very gratifying to see. Did you see like the people from California and Brooklyn like the city of Cincinnati and like the university in general? Yes. Uh, a lot of people felt that they were being exiled to Cincinnati, <laughs> uh, particularly the New Yorkers. Uh, they all thought that uh, because they had ne never been west of uh, Manhattan. Uh, but uh, once they got here, they found it, uh, they really liked it. Uh, they were a little surprised at how southern the this, this city was because they expected more something like Chicago as opposed to Cincinnati. Uh, but they all came to like it. Most of them had families, they brought families and they were very pleased with the cost of living. Uh, most of them had lived in places that were twice, you know, they could get the same. Uh, they could get twice the living accommodations that they had where they were living. And they were also very pleased with the, uh, in general with the school systems. Uh, so they came to like Cincinnati and they, they remember their, their experience here quite fondly. And you mentioned the difficult, train, or difficult times that you see, what were some of those? Uh, I remember a faculty member, uh, a faculty meeting where the uh, people who had been hired prior to the transition were accusing the ones that had been hired after the transition of not caring about the students. And I really objected to that because I thought that I, I personally felt that I uh, cared about the students and really wanted the students uh, to do well. Um, and I remember one faculty member saying that there was too much emphasis on research and I felt that there had, was not enough of emphasis on research at that time. Uh, so it, it got pretty testy at times, but eventually, I mean, we all worked together. I mean, I don't want to give the impression that it was chaos, uh, but sometimes it got a little tense. Was it just like the older generation and newer generation? Well, I don't think it's old and new, new is so much the service-oriented people versus the research-oriented people. Okay. And uh, what were some of the incidents and events that were handled in a way that disappointed you at UC? I think the hardest time for me was uh, when the union was formed and the um, the response of the administration to the union. And did you? How did you feel about the union? I was very pro-union. Okay. And I went out on strike both times uh, and I was a little disappointed that the um, administration wasn't as sincere in their negotiations and that was a very tense time for the university. Uh, fortunately we got past it uh, but it was a very tense time. And what would you do? How would you partake in that strike? Well. The first time I, I did, I have to admit, I, I crossed the line be, only to teach my class because I felt a, a duty to the class. But other than that, uh, we didn't come on campus. And on the second strike, I actually joined the pickets and was picketing. Uh, I'm not comfortable with that, but I decided that 
I, I, I decided I had to do that. And how long did the uh, strike last? Not very long. It was uh, maybe four or five days. And then the, the negotiations re, uh, s stepped up a, a step and it finally got resolved. And how did the administration feel about you teaching the class during strike? They didn't know. I, they, you know. I don't think the administration has a very good notion of what goes on at their university, university at that time. At that time, I think they were more concerned about administration than they were about the faculty per se. And you were, were you at the time uh, where Warren Bennis was the president? Mm -hmm. How did you feel about him? I know there were some faculty that had mixed feelings about him. Uh, I think he had a very difficult job. Uh, I'm not a touchy-feely kind of person. And he was into touchy-feely big time. Uh, I have mixed feelings. Uh, there were parts of what he did that I liked, and there were parts of what he did that I didn't like. So I, I can't give you a definitive answer uh, as to how I felt about him, because you'd have to give me the very specific situation, and I could then react and say, I didn't like that, or I did like that. Uh, what were some of the things that, that you did like about him? I think he was a very personable guy, and I think he was a good um, spokesman for the university. Uh, I don't think he was always honest. Uh, <laughs> um, but in his mind, he thought he was honest, but I don't think he was always honest. Um, I think also the, uh, I know that many of the community leaders were very upset with him because he wanted to make the transition to state. I think that was the right decision. I mean, I think he there. Um, I'm, and I'm going to stop there. <laughs> oh. How has the campus changed since you started? When we started, it was, it was like a little village. Now it's become a city. Uh, I, uh, the building program that uh, was started and, and completed, I think, has transformed the campus for the good. Because uh, when I talk to uh, incoming students, particularly undergraduates, uh, often the campus is what decides them to come because of how how it looks and how it feels. Uh, but in the process of becoming a city, it has also has the problems of cities, uh, of congestion and, and, and things of that nature. Uh, I think overall, I think it's been a positive changes. As far as the um, Another change is, I, is uh, we, uh, and I know this sounds contradictory, but I'm, I'm pleased to see more emphasis on undergraduate work and, and trying to really upgrade the undergraduate experience. Uh, I, I always felt that the undergraduate experience at UC was lacking, particularly when compared to my own experience at Northwestern, uh, I, I felt that uh, it didn't me it didn't measure up but I, I feel right now it's beginning to measure up and what were some of the things that were lacking in the undergraduate programs i think it was much too focused on the traditional uh, curriculums uh, and and it always i always had the feeling that the undergraduate uh, program at least in my department was sort of an afterthought uh, and, and now it's become front and center, uh, along with the graduate programs, and I think that's 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 good. Could you say they're both on an equal playing field? I don't think they're all equal. I, I don't think 
because we're a state institution and we're dependent on grant monies and, and that stuff. But I, th I think it's, it's uh, uh, I don't think the undergraduate program is necessarily the stepchild anymore. I think it's a full, you know, it's a true sibling. Now it may be the younger sibling, but it's t a true sibling. And how is the uh, Northwestern, the experience at Northwestern differ from? Northwestern was uh, very, uh, we did a lot of hands-on, even back in 1950, let's see, 1962. It was very hands-on. Uh, I mean, there was a lot of lecturing and that kind of stuff, but. Uh, and, and I always felt I knew why I was taking the courses. And all of my classmates felt the same way that they knew why they were taking courses. I didn't always feel at UC that students knew why they were taking a lot of the courses they were taking. And I hope that's changed a little bit now, that students sort of see the purpose of the course. And, uh, at least in special ed, I know they they feel that way. Even the liberal arts courses that they're taking, they can see why they're taking those particular courses. Uh, whereas, whereas at Northwestern, we always we always had a sense of why. Okay. Um, how how have uh, UC's priorities shifted since you started here? What? How how have UC's priorities shifted since you started here? Well. The main shift was that we went from a state institution, I mean a city institution to state. Uh, the pro, uh, the, and, and as a consequence, research has assumed a high priority at the university, rightly so, because if we didn't do that, then we couldn't begin to compete with other major universities. Um, I think that the undergraduate programs have gone up and down as a result of that. But I think we're on an upswing. At least I hope. I, you know, you're both undergraduates. You should, you could tell me if it's going, getting better. But I, I, I think it's getting better. Uh, the and and the people who set the tone is the, are the presidents, and each president has a different tone. And uh, but there's a, there's a consistency from presidents to presidents, and there has been a shift since Bennis. Uh, toward more of this academic uh, research and also an, an emphasis on recently on undergraduate work. Okay, and what were some, or name some of the presidents that were, you know, that were more research-based presidents at your time? Uh, let, let me rephrase that. Okay, um, I think uh, our current president is uh, uh, very research oriented, and justifiably so because of his background and so forth. But he also has a very strong interest in undergraduate education. Uh, our uh, previous president, and I'm blocking on his name. That's old age. Oh no, I think uh, was all cut from the same piece of cloth, that he was very research-oriented, but he was also very undergraduate-oriented. Um, I think the president before that, Nancy, uh, I'm blocking again. Zemper. Uh, Zemper. Uh, I think she was uh, more interested in, in undergraduates than she was graduates. Uh, and I'm going to stop there. So I mean, I, th I think it's just sort of, I mean, the basic parameters are the same, but it's sort of the emphasis changes within, within the presidency. And where do you see UC going in the future? Up. Oh. <laughs> Can you explain uh, more? I think the, um, I think our ratings across the Universe, um, uh, uh, across the university, national ratings across the university is cr increasing. And I see us getting more and more national visibility. Um, I'm not a big sports guy, but I have to admit that the sports program helps us. 
because uh, I noticed at Northwestern one, uh, once they started winning, all of a sudden the visibility rank and file person uh, suddenly appeared. And, and the reality is that you have to be visible to the academic community, but you also have to be visible to the community at large if you want to draw nationally. And, uh, and I think University of Cincinnati is doing that by virtue of the diversity of the population that's here. And uh, how do you feel about the changes, you know, changes for like the athletic department, you know, they're starting to build new stadiums? I'm okay with that. Uh, I know a lot of my colleagues may not be okay with that, but I'm okay with that. Uh, what I'm not okay with is if it becomes a major, major drag on the financial drag on the on the institution. Uh, I happen to go to all of the basketball games. I go to all the football games, soccer games, lacrosse, volleyball, and I enjoy it. And I've met the uh, stu uh, the student athletes. And I, there's a misconception about student athletes that they're kind of dumb and draggy, and actually they're quite, quite sharp and quite uh, with it. Uh, now th they do get privilege in the sense that they get tutoring that a lot of students don't get, and so forth. But they, uh, they do okay. And so I'm, as as long as they're winning and they're doing what they're supposed to do, I'm okay with that. Um, how have you seen UC connect to Cincinnati and like that? Well, I think we're getting back to get being reconnected. I think when we made the transition, we sort of distanced ourselves a little too far. But I think we had to because the city thought they owned us. And we went through a period where you'd, you'd hear p politicians and you'd hear news people still talking about us as if we were owned by them. So I think that needed to change, I mean, because we're not owned by the city of Cincinnati. But I think what's now happened is that we're beginning to reconnect and we're beginning to come back to the community as witnessed by all of the campus, not just on campus, but around campus. And the fact that uh, were more connected with uh, the community at large. Uh, and I hope that continues because we're urban, has a Could you say that? Uh, I just hope overwhelmed by the opioid uh, situation become too dependent. Uh, but on the other hand, that, that's where the money is. And the federal government is becoming less and less uh, generous. Uh, so the reality is, is that we do have to have some connection with the, with the larger community, like Macy's and P&G and so forth. And I'm OK with that. You know, I, I can live with that. There was a time in my life when I couldn't, but I can, I can now. Um, what are you most proud of at your time at UC? Winning the Dolly Cohen Award. And what is that? I won that uh, way back when I first started my career, about in the 70s. And uh, I was, uh, the reason I'm proud of that is that it's, a, it's a, an award that usually is generated by the students. The, the students do the nominations and get the departments to nominate people and so forth. And in my particular case, uh, they, when they showed me the portfolio that was developed, it, it, it brought tears to my eyes. Uh, I was uh, overwhelmed by the uh, comments made by the students. So I guess you had a like, real connection with the students? That yes. 
I, I loved, I loved us students. Uh, my largest class was 110, graduate class. And while I, the thing that I was proudest of was that by the second week of class, I knew the name of every student in class. And the stuff is that I wrote individual exams for every student. And so what I would interview the students, what their interests were, and then when I tried to cater it uh, to each individual student. And I did that for every year that I taught. Uh, so my computer is, was lo is currently loaded with uh, old exams that I've written for students. Uh, and I tried very hard not to duplicate exams uh, because uh, students are different. Uh, the smallest class I had was the first year I taught at Wynn, which was about 30. And then it went up to 100. And then it sort of tapered off to about 80. I'm very good at lecturing because I'm very good at, at tying it to practical ex, practic, practicalities. And the students seem to respond to that. So I, class size didn't bother me. I prefer small seminar classes, but I was OK with uh, uh, And I'm inherently an actor. Uh, so I, I was very good at I was a very good lecturer and uh, and and my assign my midterms and my finals always uh, had a practical application so they had to go back out into the community collect data bring it back and then answer the question so that I could maintain that connection to the community. Okay, so I guess. It depends on how you want to look at it. <laughs> uh, lecturing. It was more like acting. <laughs> oh, what else would you like me, or would you like to tell me about UC? You know. I'm very grateful to UC. Um, I was hired at a time when they were making a transition, and I was hired to do a certain task. And that task is when I <clears throat> let, let me back up. When I was in high school, I was uh, in a uh, in a in the academic track, but no one expected me to go to college. And so when I went to college. And I met all these professors. I said to myself, I want to be like them. And UC allowed me to be like them. Uh, it gave me the opportunity to become uh, connected to the larger academic community, both nationally and internationally. And UC allowed me to build a reputation that I don't think I would have gotten if I had stayed in uh, DC. Uh, so I'm very grateful to you, uh, to UC, and I think it's it, it's it's a good place to work. It, I don't I, I don't know if it is now because I don't work here anymore, but it was a very good place to work, and and I'm very grateful to you, see. And I guess administrators, everybody, everybody, everybody helped you out. Yeah, everybody. Uh, again, I, I I went through a lot of deans, a lot of department heads, but in in general, they were very supportive and very uh, did the right thing. Uh, and uh, I was okay. I, I, I've been okay. I mean, it hasn't been a bed of roses, but I'm okay with UC. I'm okay with UC. Uh, could you say all the departments had, had one goal, and that was the service of students? In special ed, we were. Very student oriented, so I can't really talk about the rest of the university. Student oriented, and 
and I can s honestly say for the uh, department heads in special ed, uh, the student always came first. Uh, and as a consequence, the student experience both at the graduate level and undergrad for the for Not really. It's uh Not really. I, I, I think I've said everything I can say, <laughs> unless you want me to pad more. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we're good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the interview okay. and everything. Appreciate it.